Hi, I'm Ron Polk, and today I'm going to use SketchUp to model this circle cutter jig from Festool. In a future video, I'm going to build this parallel guide that you saw me build in a couple of videos in the past in the shop. What I want to do is model it and upload that model so anybody can download it and use it for a reference. But I need to have the circle cutter from Festool as part of the model. I'll take this complex model and break it down into uh, small, easy to build parts, and then I will um, be able to use it uh, in the next video. So if you want to follow along, you might learn some tips and tricks that you can leverage in your uh, woodworking or construction projects. So the first thing to do is launch SketchUp, which I've already done. I've already saved myself a file. And normally I draw in the imperial system, feet and inches, but I'm going to be using a um, digital caliper, which I've set up for millimeter. Now, the very first thing I want to do is I don't want to spend a lot of time doing this if somebody's already done it. Uh, so I'm going to go right here. I'm in SketchUp. I'm going to click on this little icon, which takes me right to the 3D warehouse. And I'm going to type in Festool. And that should, hopefully anybody who's drawn a model of anything Festool has put that in the name because that's the way they're filtered. And I'll just kind of look through here. You can see uh, I've got some stuff here, the, my wood shop, for anybody to download if they want to try to use some of those ideas for their trailer or truck or shop. But as I scroll through here, I see a lot of neat Festool stuff, but I do not see a circle cutter. I'm going to download this parallel guide here uh, because it's got some colors and text and stuff that I may be able to use in my model at least for consistency. Alright so I'm gonna hit download it'll ask me do I want to bring it in the model of course I do and so I've downloaded all the the uh, parts. Okay so now the next thing I want to do is I'll be uh, pulling off some guidelines and, and orienting uh, some of the geometry and I could use these lines but I find it easier just to draw a quick rectangle. So I'm going to draw a rectangle, click, click. I'm going to type in 500 comma 500. That'll give me 500 millimeters by 500 millimeters. Uh, because I'm set up for uh, the metric millimeter system, it'll default to millimeters. If I wanted to put in feet and inches, I could input those and it would convert them. Or if I wanted to go to centimeters, it'd do the, the same thing. So I'm going to hit the P key for push pull, pull that up, type in 500 again. And then I'm going to triple click to select all of the um, all of the geometry. Right click and make a group. And that's just to close it up in a container. Now anything else, any other geometry that I draw won't stick to it. To start with, I want to break this down into pieces. And I I have the the, the circle that represents the rolled up tape. I have the the portion that represents the part that I cut off. I'll be drawing it with this part. And so I have that. Uh, the end here. Um, I'll have the base. I'll have the cylinder where the, the locking and it, and it rolls out of. Then I'll have the base for that. And then I have the uh, circle point. And so I want to break all of those into separate pieces. So I'll, I'll draw this cylinder and this cylinder first. So I'll hit my C key for circle. And you see if I didn't have that, it would default to the flat plane here. And then you know, it, it's just, uh, there are ways to flip it up, but I'm going to just use this surface as a reference. And then um, I could hold down the shift key and move it around and it'll stay in that red direction. Um, or I could just draw it right on there. So I'm going to uh, do that. And that was about 70. Remember when you're doing a circle, you're measuring uh, the, the uh, diameter. So you're, you're measuring from the center. 70, I'll type in 35, enter. And then I'm going to make one of these and I'm going to delete. Uh, I'm going to use it to create some other geometry. So I'm going to double click, move, and then hold down the option key. And that gives me a little plus. And then I've got a copy of it. That copy, I'm going to right click. I'm going to make a group. And I'm going to ignore that one for now. I'm going to grab the one that is not a group. And I'm going to hit the M key for move because that'll be some good reference for me. Now I want to draw this cylinder that goes, uh, you know, perpendicular to 
um, the, the circle or the tape. So I want to draw that. Hit the C key for circle. I want to draw this in the green direction. So I'm going to just drag it out, click, click, and 28, so it'll be 14 inner. And then I am going to move it. And you can see with these other ones, uh, even this one here, which is not a group, um, I can move it. It's not sticking to the cube because the cube is a group and that's important. So I am going to uh, get in there, take that surface and just push it out. doesn't matter how far, just plenty. Grab it, triple click, move. Grab the lowest point there. Now it's on the base. This one, or blue direction, and I'm going to type in five, enter. So I know that's five millimeters. And now I'm going to just move it out. And, I, and I've got it going in the red direction. I'm going to hold down the shift key, and it'll lock it in that orientation. As I, and I'm going to hit the P key and grab this surface and just pull it just well into uh, the other geometry. They're not intersected at this point. And what I'm going to do is right, I've got the geometry that I want to cut, I've selected, and I'm going to, got to hit the, to, to have the context of the right click work, you have to have the black arrow. So I am going to intersect faces with model. And now you'll see there is a dark line. It shows me that this has been cut. I'm going to back up Command Z. You can see before I did that, nothing. So if I click on that surface, right click, and intersect faces with model, then you can see that there's a line there. This surface has cut this surface. So I'm going to delete all of that stuff. And so now I have this cylinder cut with the um, that shape that I want. It's not really an angle, it's kind of a curvature. And there may be other ways to draw it, but that is the way I have figured out. And now I want to make it the right length. Okay, so that gives me a reference point that I want to have that measurement of 33 millimeters. So I'm going to hit the T key for tape measure. That's not the dimensioning tool. This is a tape measure for guidelines. So I've just drawn a guideline off of my cube again. And I'm going to type in 33 inner. P for push pull. And just go and just reference that line. So I'm going to go into the group. And I am going to grab the F tool for offset. That's the little double line tool. So I'll hit F. And I'm going to grab that. To enter. And so now I have, uh, I don't need this middle portion. I can delete that. And I want to push pull out to the proper width. P key for push pull. And pull that out to 24.5 enter. So I'm going to hit the move tool again. I'm going to grab that lowest point and I'm, I'm in the blue direction on the face. I'm just going to hold the shift key and just touch the bottom of the cube. Grab this M key. I'm going to get in nice and close. And because I'm using my scroll wheel, I don't have to change tools to zoom in. I'm just uh, scrolling in and out with my scroll wheel. And that's default with uh, SketchUp. So I'm going to come over here, lock it in right on the five millimeters. Okay, so now what I want to do is center these two with each other. So I'm going to take the move tool and I'm going to go in the green direction, shift. And there you can see I've got the two surfaces kind of together. I think I have them centered, but I'm not 100% sure. So I'm going to grab the center point on the very base and that you can see it turns green and so now I know that I've centered the two and I'm going to hold down the shift key to add so I've got both of them they'll stay together now so their reference point will stay the same get them away from that uh, cube so I'm on the green axis I'm going to shift and I'm going to run this out so I'm going to just hit the circle key just kind of tap on that edge and that will know where I want to find center come out and then I'm going to hit the push pull, come out 10, enter. And then I'm going to triple click, right click, make a group. So M key for move. And I'm just going to grab it down there. And I'm going to go, get going in the green direction. Click, type in 2, enter.
Okay, we've made some good progress with this little model. I'm going to break this project up into three shorter videos so it'll be easier to follow. So look forward to uh, part two. Also, if you like these kind of videos, be sure to like them, share them with others, and subscribe to the channel. And also, uh, you can get a set of the Polk Workbench plans by clicking on the link right here on screen. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Have a great day.